is the approval of the agenda for tonight, for February 4th. I move to approve uh, February 4th agenda. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we get to the good stuff. Special recognitions and reports. So, student reports to the board. We are going to hear from Kendall Wood first.
was competitive in many of their games and lost by they lost several by just a few points. They also took second place in the Yukai tournament over winter break. The eighth grade boys basketball team meanwhile finished their season with an overall record of twelve to nine, which included a third place finish in the Rincon Valley tournament and second place in the Yukai tournament. Our seventh grade girls volleyball team was in um I don't know how to say that word. Uh, was in the league championship all season before finishing ultimately in second place overall with a strong 9-3 record. The 8th grade girls volleyball team showed tremendous improvement from last year. They finished with a 4-8 and eight record. The second semester rally was um, something that leadership put on and it was we had a bunch of games and we played music and it was a really fun thing to put on. The author visit, Kate Milford, of the author of Green Glass House, came and talked to us about how to get over the writer's block, mm -hmm. and she told us a really fun story. I was a part of that. The Bayside Challenges participations. We are doing things like egg drop, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, like structure making, and today we did um, paper airplane and Pictionary. And that was really fun. But what, what is the Bayside Challenge? What it's basically that? a local science Olympia where um, um, your school gets to, uh, has a team and they get to compete in events. And um, the more points you gain for your school, then the higher you place. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's like science. -y. Yeah. What's happening in class? Ms. Brooksong's class is working on the center circle so that we can beautify our school. There's a team test in Ms. Payne's math. 8th grade class where all the team members collaborate on one test. Right. Hmm. Um, making egg <laughs> nuggets in independent living, so they're making their own food. Dancing in PE, we're doing square dancing right now. <laughs> <laughs> building houses in 6th grade STEM. So they're just building houses out of, yeah, whatever, right crackers. <laughs> Creating masterpieces in our class, they're hard at work just making their art pieces. There's a Dempsey's Dine and Donate tomorrow. There is a City Coral Festival at 7 p.m. on the 12th, and then our wrestling is on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thank you.
So our PTA brings so many wonderful programs and extras to our school. This year we broke the record and we raised $56,176 for a Jogathon. Okay. And because of this, we were able to receive supply money for our classrooms and hire a garden coordinator and get an up upgraded stereo, stereo system and for all of our TK and classrooms. Um, and the dinosaur is our yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many laps? <laughs> Just one. <Yeah. laughs> um, we also have a um, movie night, which is a family fun night where students and families are invited to a family to view a movie that the school votes on each month. Cool. That's monthly? You know what says cold? And then we also have the Winter Carnival, which is another time for families to get together and celebrate community. And we have special programs like the Giving Tree, where our community provides holiday presents for over 30 families in need. And this is where families at McKinley volunteer to buy a present for somebody else at McKinley who might not be able to afford one. And then there was also a performance by the TK and kindergartners with the famous James K. <laughs> um, for our field trips, we had the third graders went on a, um, a field trip to Cowskate where they did STEM projects and then they roller skated afterwards. And then in the other picture, it is kindergarten coming back from a pumpkin patch. Oh, yeah. So for PACS, we also have the seventh graders at Mount Hermon, which is one of the highlights at the beginning of the seventh grade year. And they go to camp to get to know each other in the beginning. And then uh, we also have the sixth graders at the Charles, Charles Schultz Museum. And then we also have a rock and roll day, where every first Wednesday of the month, our students receive a prize for walking, biking, etc., to promote being more environmentally conscientious. And then this other image of kindergartners performing their ABC fashion show, which is really adorable. <laughs> <laughs> we also have an art docent program um, for TK through sixth grade, where parent volunteers come and teach students how to do certain art styles, as well as background information on the art pieces. Um, for fourth through sixth graders, they also have a genius style project, which they can research whichever topic they choose and then do a presentation on. So at PAX, Art and Bander is some of the electives we offer. We also offer film studies, robotics, and food science, as well as many others. We, for our Spanish class, we did a Dia de los Muertos project where the whole school made ofrendas to honor their dead ancestors, and then the younger kids made gingerbread houses, and they labeled each piece of the house, and then constructed it. And here are some other photos of the seventh graders in school getting a presentation from one of the parents. Um, in the first image, this is the kindergartners live streaming with a zookeeper after they adopted an elephant. So that's in the process of it. And then the other picture is the Santa Rosa Symphony Brass Group coming to talk about music and performing for them. Also, we had an assembly for Mr. Callahan who came to talk to the students about perfect attendance. <laughs> we also had a program Just Two Moms come in to talk to students about inclusivity with kids with disabilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so last week, McKinley and Pax participated in the Great Kindness Challenge, where we had many spirit days to promote kindness throughout the <coughs> school. Some of the highlights include mm -hmm. Peace and Love Day, Peace, Love, and Kindness Day, where students get dressed as hippies, which you can see here. Um, this last week for the Great Kindness Challenge, we had Spirit Day each day, and the first image is from a crazy soft day, and the second is where you dress up with someone who promotes kindness, and one of the students dressed up as a custodian. Oh, this is also an image from Kindness Week where I collected quotes from each teacher and then put it in front of the entryway that um, Greek was given. And then lastly, this is our school's magnet design that was designed by someone from Adidas for free. And we actually have them here, I believe they're back there. Oh, oh, wow. 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 Not going to be happy. Uh, <laughs> 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 Just maybe 
have to cover it. <laughs> <laughs>
258 students received 338 scholarships from 66 PEF managed funds. The majority of the awards were given to Casa Grande and Petaluma High School students attending two four-year colleges and vocational programs. And students from all seven local high schools are eligible to apply. All my children, I had three that went through the system. They've all got scholarships. Uh, I've been a reader on the scholarships. What I really like, it's not just your four point yeah. plus kids. There are scholarships for kids who are going to technical, uh, vocational school and don't have high GPA. And, uh, for me, that's like so important because yeah. our really excelling kids get recognized, but this is a way for the kids that aren't at the top academically to be recognized. And I think that's it. Okay, so this, uh, the next slide, this gentleman <laughs> went, is at McDowell School. So when we went and awarded the grant last year, he was seated with his dad on the multi-floor. And when they turned around and said, you won this grant, he turned around to Katie Rookie, who's our longtime program director, and was like, yes! <laughs> So, and his dad's like, he's so excited. I'm like, okay, we need your photo. So, yeah. <laughs> that. so um, again, I just want to wrap up by saying we're here to partner with you. We currently partner very closely with your um, educators and the people who are on the you know ground in your schools. And it really is meant to be something that this community became so proud of that we support every single student along the way. PF does not receive state or government funding. We receive funding from individuals and business <coughs> partnerships. So what we do is because this community makes it possible and they want to invest in that effort. So they support their districts, they support their teachers, their schools, and for us they support our work to make sure we're all working together. So um, as Jane said, we have given over $7.1 million in combined awards for the last 38 years. and. Um, we plan to be here for the next 38 plus, so we will continue to work closely with you. We are we have grown because we had some very dedicated community members in the beginning who were thoughtful in how they created the foundation, and we grew at a pace that we could actually, you know, really invest in ourselves, invest in you, and really build, no pun intended, a strong foundation. So we are here. We are growing, but we are also small enough to be flexible and proactive with the needs that you have in your schools. Okay? So I think I'll let you get on with the rest of your evening, but we just want to say thank you for the work you're doing. Thank, thank you, you for all the things that are happening in education locally, and we're excited to be a part of it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some of the 
<coughs> Some of the services that our agency provides include early intervention programming at schools, uh, therapy, uh, mental health and behavioral health support, uh, LGBTQ uh, related issues, and then we also have transitioning how transitional housing. Uh, we're in Sonoma County, uh, Napa County, Marin, and Alameda. So our community counseling program is an individual uh, therapy for five to twenty for people five to twenty-five. Our partnership with Petaluma uh, City Schools began in December of 2017 with this program. So this program allows uh, for our clinicians to come into the to the schools and provide uh, up to five uh, five sessions a month with each kid. So it's all. It's offered, uh, from, it's offered for the youth who are experiencing mild to moderate mental health related issues. So it can range any, anywhere from you know, childhood trauma, uh, depression, anxiety, a little bit of you know, sometimes even self-harm or suicidal ideation. So uh, are, are the kids referred to you by the school? Yes, so, so we partner with uh, Linda and Nikki do a really good job of being our liaison and then mm -hmm. the counselors at each of the sites uh, have, have, who see the, the students more have the better insight of who to refer. Mm -hmm. um, part, part of it, uh, the students have to be Medi-Cal eligible so um, do you that's go directly to Medi-Cal then? Or? We do. Okay. So we get reimbursed to be from right. Beacon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and it comes to Petaluma City Schools at no charge. Great. So. How so. many? Sorry, ask about about how many kids in general you're seeing? Yes. So in in general, so if you go to the next slide, um, so I'll get there in just a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's fine. That's perfect. Sorry. You go ahead. Um, so what's the benefits to Petaluma City School is the, the clinicians from the district get to see the client, the youth who are not uh, Medi-Cal eligible. That means we get to serve a greater number of youth, yeah. right, by using our outsourcing to um, side by side, right? Petaluma People Services does a great job. Uh, the health clinic do a really good job. But the thing is, is the wait lists are, yeah. are what's getting... Uh, getting to be out of control, right? So I think that's where we come in to partner with the schools. So in December of 2017 to the rest of 2018, we served five youth, and it was only at one school that we started getting embedded. Uh, 2018 to 2019, we jumped to three schools and served 20 youth throughout, uh, throughout the time. This, this year, so far, we served 34 youth, and we're at seven schools. Wow. So, and the average length of service is about eight months. Um, every six months, uh, the clinician will meet with the student and sometimes the family and do a reauthorization, reevaluate re the goals, the treatment plan, and uh, evaluate their CANS assessment. The CANS assessment is uh, uh, the, it's the CANS assessment is uh, the the strengths and was it the strengths and needs assessment? Sorry. Yeah. I'm out this. Oh, it's okay. So how many clinicians do you have coming to our seven schools? We have Denise and Hilda are are primarily dedicated to Petaluma okay. right now. Yeah. Um, we are able to upgrade. I mean, we have I think five clinicians oh, okay. in the okay. program. Yeah. Uh, but depending on the referrals, right. we can allocate the time to each side. The two clinicians are serving 34 youth. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yes. And Very they're impressive. all um, therapists. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the CANS is the the stands for the Child uh, and Adolescent Needs and Strengths Assessment. So the goal of the CANS is uh, to focus on reducing the risk behaviors and increasing protective mm -hmm. factors. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you go back, sorry. So those are the schools that uh, the community counseling program is, uh, is currently at. So, yeah. awesome. So that's uh, so. One more thing about community counseling is uh, we do offer services at our Santa, Santa Rosa office as well. Uh, but we understand that that's transportation issues can get in the way for our families. Um, so we're working on collaborating uh, with other partners here in town to be, have different office space. Uh, throughout the summer, uh, 
Dave Rose in the past had set up uh, access, gave us access to uh, the district office, and we were able to see uh, clients here at the district office so that uh, so, so the youth can continue to have services after they uh, go off for summer. So that's a, that was our community counseling uh, program, and our youth ride program uh, has been has been serving youth here in Petaluma for about 10 years now. Um, before, it was uh, CEYD, and uh, 2014, 2014, there was a rebranding of the program, um, and it became Youth Ride. So, um, how our work reflects our mission. Uh, we all know that the teachers and the counselors, uh, they're they have a lot on their plate and, and the budget here in California is becoming less and less. So what we do is we provide, uh, we provide early intervention services for youth who, who are referred for, for truancy, uh, for uh, gang involvement, just low behave or bad behavior or whatever it is. And we try to, uh, and we try to work with them so they can go ahead and move forward. How is that different from side by side? Side by Side is our organization, and, okay. and Community Counseling and Youth Thrive are programs within, uh, within our organization. Okay. thanks. <clears throat> Sorry, I got to catch my breath. It's a lot of fabulous. Okay. Um, so the structure of the program, uh, it's 10 weekly, it, 10 weekly group sessions. We meet once a week, and we serve about 10, uh, eight, to, eight to 12, eight to 15 sure. uh, students. So it, it depends uh, on the site and, and also the need of that particular group, right? So the, the junior highs, we tend to see a little bit uh, less due to just developmentally, they're all over the place and it's hard to ma maintain uh, the group dynamics. Um, and then uh, we do offer, this summer, we offered uh, a, a youth ride during the summer school at Casa Grande. We had a bridge program from eighth graders going into ninth, and then we also, we also had a group for the high schoolers. So that was, uh, that was something that we want, hopefully, to continue to do. Um, we, uh, we try to meet with our administrators and our counselors uh, every time that, we, that we're on campus. And, and also through email and uh, through phone, if need be, to just keep the communication flowing, not just them to us, but also us passing on the information that, that we're seeing in the group, the trends, um, and just what's going on with their students. <clears throat> we also offer uh, day trips and overnight trips, which this is the carrot that we dangle in yeah. front for our youth, <laughs> right? Um, and then also basic needs uh, case management. So what that would look like is uh, if we're hearing in group that a student and their family may be homeless, yeah. right, we can, in collaboration with the counselors, we can uh, find them different resources. Um, I'm working on buying, uh, we have a, I'm working on getting a grant to, so we can uh, provide bus passes to some of our youth. Um, and that, uh, that stems from our SAR. Um, our star meetings that I participate in, um, a lot of some some of our youth are having trouble getting to uh, yeah. to school yeah. because they live on the outskirts. Yeah. And if we're able to help them do this, you know why not? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what do the groups entail? Um, it's a we. We do anger management, so it's aggression replacement training, but we also uh, focus on the pro-social pro skill development from thinking for a change. So that's your uh, motivation, uh, critical thinking, being able to, to listen and communicate. Um, granted, it, it is a little bit difficult sometimes, but we try to role play and, and, and uh, pass those uh, skills forward. Um, and then we have conflict resolution and uh, gang prevention, if need be. Gang prevention was normally, uh, well, in the past, we've uh, focused more with San Antonio, um, with, with the dynamic there, and then also a little bit at Petaluma High with the, uh, there was a white 
like supremacy group and, and just trying to help um, trying to help both groups just co coexist. So who does Youth Thrive serve, right? Yeah. To me, that that seems uh, it's your potential. That's your leader. That's your potential college student. Your athlete. Your mechanic, right? That's who we serve, right? But something got in the way. Whether it's uh, childhood trauma, you know, coming here um, from a different country and being, uh, you know, this is new, right? How do you find yourself in a new culture? Um, we also, uh, so, but those, they show their, their behaviors through, like I mentioned earlier, getting problematic behavior, right? Defiance, they, they may struggle with uh, their relationship with adults, yeah. right? Um, they may also uh, skip class or find that it's okay right. to, to be late all the time. So how do we address those? So that's, that's, who, we, that's who we serve. Um, and, and that's directly influenced through uh, the counselors and the, and the principals and uh, assistant principals at each site. And we're at uh, Petaluma High School, all of the high schools, um, and then the junior highs as well. What kind of staff facilitate the groups? Um, I, it's either I facilitate them or uh, Vernon. Oh. And, and in terms of, would you like to know? Just like your title or whatever. Oh, we're youth, youth specialists. Oh, okay. So I have yeah. a, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice with a focus on community alternatives. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah. Vernon does as well. Awesome. Vernon does. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm from the nonprofit sector, so awesome. I just know, yeah. I, we, both the nonprofits I've worked in have worked with you guys, so. Nice. Yeah. Good community asset, for sure. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. So, uh, during the summer, we served a total of 16 students, and uh, I think, I believe, eight of them were the junior, the bridge program, and then the uh, 12 of them, or eight and eight, I think it was eight and eight, yeah, it was the high school. Uh, during the fall, we served 55 students, 81% um, of them, so they're co-ed sometimes, so some, uh, some schools, uh, encourage it to be co-ed and others uh, prefer just to keep it separate. De that's depending on the need. Uh, Latinx, 62%, so the majority is, you know, we serve people of color, right? We do have um, students who, who are white as well, um, but predominantly they, they are uh, uh, of color and uh, from low socioeconomic status. And, that, and we get that information from the free and reduced. Right. Yeah. Um, and boys. Boys. Lots of boys. Right. Hmm. Um, so from the fall, oh, the way that we, so how do we measure success? Uh, we work, we couldn't do this without the counseling team and the, and the principals and the assistant principals. They help us track the data. Um, so we, we look at grades, uh, their behavior, and then, uh, uh, Attendance, and when I say attendance, it's unexcused attendance. Um, that's that's what we focus on. The numbers look pretty good this time around, but they're not always like this. Um, and, and just because they look good doesn't mean that it's going to continue to reflect the next time around. And if they look, if we don't do as well, doesn't mean that the that the young people are making progress towards their goals. Right? This. It's hard because sometimes we don't see the direct correlation of the of the services that we're that we're providing, but maybe we'll see it six months later, right. three years later, or twelve years later yeah. when, when we see them grow. Yeah. Right. So, some of the these are a few pictures of uh, some of the trips and the incentives that that we do. So day trips can range anywhere from just like a ballpark, going to the Giants game, uh, going to the movies, bowling, going on hikes, uh, getting them out, showing them that they can do <coughs> fun, uh, fun things with their friends, with their family, and, and everything is uh, you know alcohol free, drug free, everything is you know trying to build healthy habits. Um, so if we have time. I'd like to show you guys this video of our rafting trip. So. I 
the American River. So the first night we set up a tent, uh, it, it's funny seeing everyone just struggle, yeah. right? have to really rely on one another to, to, build, uh, to build up their tent because a lot, of, a lot of times these are experiences, they're experiencing this yeah. or these types of activities for the very first time. Right. right. Um, and the other is our snow trip. Uh, in the snow, we, we, we usually do just uh, sledding. Uh, but there has been other times where we've taken uh, snowboarding, so they'll, they'll do lessons for uh, two hours during the morning, and then they, they can go ahead and try, uh, try it on their own. And again, it's two nights and then uh, three days. And, but in order for them to participate, they have to hit on uh, the three topics that I talked about earlier, right? Increasing their, their grades, lowering their disciplinary referrals, um, and increasing their attendance. I'm sorry. Um, another, another type of, uh, so we do pre and post surveys. Um, and, and one of the surveys that we use is called the DAP, the Develop, Developmental Asset Profile. Um, this is an example of uh, scores from the past. We haven't received the results for this year yet. Um, but you can see it measures different categories from uh, support, empowerment, you know, boundaries and expectations. Uh, constructive use of time. So, what do you do when you're, you know, when, in your downtime? Um, commitment to learning and positive values, I mean, social competency and positive identity. So, this is something that we focus on uh, through our life skills and our programming. And then they get to go ahead and practice it when we go out on the outings, right? Having dinner in a public place and having to sit down, table manners, instead of just going to fast food and, and getting their food right away. So all of these we try to implement when, when we go ahead and, uh, in real life. So do you look at these scores for every individual or is it more as a It's a whole? group. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. What we Unfortunately, this only allows, I think the minimum is 30, yeah. but you have to do, it's in groups. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And it costs money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, you do, did you say that you did it twice a year, like at the beginning and at the end? Is it? Uh, yes. Okay, so you kind of can see that the increases mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, sometimes the, it's not always uh, pretty, right. right? And that's because uh, I've found uh, that sometimes it takes a little bit longer. When you first start the group, the young people put their best foot forward, right? They want to show that they got it all together. Uh, yes, uh, my family life is perfect. Everything's yeah. going, you know what I mean? But then you start working with them. You start getting to the self, uh, you know, being, uh, reflecting on yourself and what's actually going on. And that's when you're able to tap in, like they're able to tap in within themselves how they really feel um, about what's going on. Uh, what's ongoing uh, and available? So, for the high schools, uh, we just we created a youth right action team. So, the high school students uh, were invited to form a committee to raise awareness on uh, reducing the stigma around mental health. And how they're doing that is uh, through making just present poster <coughs> presentations, and they're showing it off at their school site or to their peers. Um, we hope that, I'm crossing my fingers, that they're able to do that at our next little fundraiser thing, yeah, so smart. we can showcase them. Yeah. Um, we partner with uh, the Real Choices program of St. Quentin. Uh, that's uh, really powerful. Um, they are, uh, I work with Ernie Pulliam, he's a uh, retired CO, and we go in and it was, uh, they get a tour 
of the yard, and we, uh, he explains the different dynamics, and then we go into the education building where the inmates who are made up of, uh, of men who have committed crimes when they're as young as 15 to 17, 20 years old, and you know are there for a very long time, and they get to speak to them about uh, their value of education and how it really <coughs> took them to go there to be able to take their education seriously, right? Um, and they talk about their atti their attitudes, their values, and then their behaviors, and if they're aligned or not. Um, and then so we go. They get to have lunch with them, uh, and then it's like breakout sessions. They get like one on ones with them. Um, so it's beneficial for the youth and is very powerful. It's not yelling and screaming at them, um, but it's also very impactful for the uh, for the men inside. Right, that's their, uh, yeah. one way for them to be able to repair the harm that they've done in the past. Yeah. So when you come back from something like that, do you have a group meeting? We do. It must be pretty yes, it's, it's, powerful. It's, it's really powerful it's and it's moving. Yeah. It's very moving. Uh, uh, they write, are we, part of the, uh, part of the process afterwards is uh, they write a, a letter. So it could be directed to one person or just in general. And then I, I go ahead and get it to uh, Ernie, the, C the CEO, and he gets it to them just as a way of uh, thank you and, and for them to really reflect and think. And sometimes they get class credit as well. Do you uh, all, um, when you're doing demographics and stuff, ask if they have a family member incarcerated? We do. Uh, yeah, so um, that's I, like a big overlap. Um, some of them, yes, so, so that's a question that I think um, we actually took away this year because okay. it was really yeah. intrusive, yeah. Um, but we do, we do ask another question, or through, through our groups, right. it comes out, right? Um, and then collaborations uh, with Mentor Me, uh, Martin, big part of uh, Youth Thrive, used to be an employee for Youth Thrive, amazing person. He's now at Mentor Me, and we hope to, uh, to continue like, our partnership with them. Uh, Petaluma Police Department, so we have a few volunteers from the Petaluma Police Department who go on our trips, and uh, not in plain clothes, <laughs> in plain clothes. And then on the last day, uh, the last evening, they go ahead and they tell them, we gather around and they go ahead and express what they do for a living, and you get this big aha uh, moment, <laughs> like, you know, that they're able to, uh, to just have a good time. They're people just like us. And, it, and again, it helps the young people understand that, uh, bridge the, the, the gap, but it also helps the police officers, yeah. you know, understand the kids, which if they see them around town, they may, you know, they may actually take it a little bit easier on them. Um, job Corps, we recently went and visited Job Corps, which is in the city, um, and that was, uh, I think we only took like four students, but those four students were uh, at the alternative side, so at uh, Sonoma Mountain and Carpe Diem, and they're kind of struggling with their credits, um, so we're just trying to find alternatives, even if it's not a four-year four -year, uh, route, Right? What else is out there? Because you're 16, 17, 18, and you're thinking, okay, what am I going to do next? You get that anxiety of, okay, what are my options? And what we want to do there is just kind of uh, show, show what else is out there. And that's just uh, some of our funders for, for Youth Thrive. Uh, Youth Thrive is, uh, we don't receive money from uh, the government as well, so we rely directly on the partnership with uh, the school districts, and then we offset uh, whatever isn't paid, because uh, the cost is never paid fully by the schools, so then we go ahead and we get funders, uh, proposals, and then uh, uh, direct con contributions as well. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I just had a really quick question. So this is just local. This isn't like a na attached to a national organization or a state now. I, I might have missed it at the beginning. No. So we are uh, at all of the junior highs and high schools here in Petaluma. And, uh, and Heelsburg. Napa and so Healdsburg and Marin. Right. But, some, but the, the over, you know, the side by side is, is just, just, just being area. generated from this local area. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and now we're math instructional materials pilot and selection process at Mary
opportunity to speak in front of the board. And, um, the first time actually in the capacity of being a principal at Mary Collins. And so I'm very excited to be here. Um, and while I have the floor, I just want to say I had an opportunity to work with Adrian when I was over at uh, Kenilworth. And the work they do with the students in our school district is absolutely amazing. And I can't speak highly enough of the services that they provide to our kids. Um, also, got to just throw a bone to Maureen. She's not here, but I worked with her uh, on the grant process, and she helps manage our fund at Cherry Valley. And um, these two people are just really great, you know, partners to our district. Um, today, I have a small team here, though. Uh, from their Collins, I have Mary Akers Bell, who is one of our two three teachers, and Lisa Reed, who is one of our four five teachers, and I also have. Uh, one of my parents here, Rajiv Ramani, and we were all a part of um, looking at math instruction at our school and to create ways for us to do a better job teaching math to our students. Um, last year, Cherry Valley hired seven new teachers, and we only have a staff of 15 teachers. So it was almost yes. half, yeah. So we went through a huge transformation there. But it was a great opportunity for us to really take stock and inventory of the curriculum materials that we had um, because the teachers were brand new and they were coming in and, and what do I have and, and what lessons should I be teaching and they were collaborating in their grade alike groups and what we discovered is we had a lot. We really did. We had everyday math materials. Uh, we had engaging New York materials. We had uh, FOSNO math units and we had Mars tasks. And we were all using all these wonderful materials in very wonderful and creative ways, but they weren't really meeting the needs of our unique setting at Cherry Valley. Um, we serve our students in multi-age classrooms. Um, K-1s are together, two threes are together, four fives are together, and then the middle school is six, seven, and eight. And that has many wonderful benefits to our students. It gives them the opportunity to loop with their teachers for two years, so those teachers get to know them, uh, it eliminates some of the need for the second year to do all the diagnostics because they already know where their kids are, so they can just pick up and keep running with them. So we can move them faster, um, farther in the two years that we live with the same teacher. Um, but it does create that challenge, too, because now you've got this really broad range of learners in your classroom. And so um, we scheduled a meeting to sit down and talk um, and discuss what we thought was the best approach. And we brought Rajiv on as a consultant. Rajiv is an expert in uh, math instruction. He is a Sonoma State professor and works in the teacher credentialing program. And I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about what he heard when he came to our meeting and we discussed our math program and curriculum resources at Cherry Valley. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi, yeah. um, so my name is Rajiv Ramani. I'm a math teacher educator at Sonoma State. Um, assistant professor in math education, and I'm also a parent of two children. Um, my son is in third grade, and I have a daughter in uh, kindergarten. Um, so I'm here to support um, Mary Collins and Cherry Valley's um, decision to adopt Bridges' um, math curriculum. Um, I'm just going to give you just a little bit of background on like what I learned about Bridges and what I've, how I've interacted with it too. Um, so Bridges are, is a very well designed curriculum um, that really fits the needs of what Cherry Valley is looking for. Um, particularly their approach to teaching and learning. Um, so in particular, um, you know, as um, Principal Schluter mentioned that um, Mary Collins at Cherry Valley is a multi-age classroom, a heterogeneous classroom. Um, and the way that learning is looked at is that it's a social endeavor, right? It's, it's socially constructed, it's co-constructed through communication, through interactions, you know, so, um, and, um, the aim is to, for problem solving to happen collaboratively, um, to think about multiple perspectives, how people are look, children are looking at um, mathematics, and really using those critical thinking skills. So Bridges um, really allows for students to look at, make, and test their conjectures, and really record thinking. Um, they solve problems using like visual models and manipulatives. Um, and then this is my favorite part, is that students talk. Um, discussion. That's what I do at Sonoma State. I'm all about math discussions. Um, and they talk, they move, they, and they engage actively with the curriculum. Um, so, and then, so that puts then the onus on teachers to really promote discourse in the classroom. And that's an important piece of the Bridges curriculum. Um, and discussion happens in lots of ways. Partner groups, small groups, 
whole class discussions, right? And Bridges really supports that discourse of exploration, um, and the curriculum is really focused on conceptual understanding, um, math reasoning, which is really important, and then procedural fluency as well. Um, so the middle school at Cherry Valley, um, they use CPM, and, and Bridges is a really good, like, connecting curriculum that really matches with um, the middle school um, curriculum. Um, it allows this whole the idea of um, exploration and discussion, and um, it's really based around group work settings, um, and, so, and so it's a really nice fit. Um, if you guys are familiar with the Ed Report, the Ed Report reviews different curriculum out there, and it gave Bridges curriculum its highest rating uh, across their three um, areas. Focus on coherence, rigor, and math practices, and um, usability. Um, so when I was in the meetings, a lot of this conversation came out about what Cherry Valley is all about, how we've approached things, and how there's a need also to have a common language. And I think that it's, it's important that across the K-5 um, school that they have a similar curriculum that they can work together and um, collaborate on. Um, so if Bridges is adopted, I would um, ask you to consider support in the, the, you know, the professional development around it, because that's really important. Not just saying, here, this is the curriculum you can use, and this is how you use it, but also what are the instructional practices that connect to this curriculum and how we can support this work in group work. So thank you for your time. Um, hi, I'm Lisa Reed, and I teach fourth and fifth grade. Um, I am really excited about math. I'm in my 17th year of teaching and my math journey. Um, I think it's really important to have a really good program that would be the K-5 for at our school. Um, I don't have a master's in math, so I need a program to help me be masterful in, in teaching math. And I need to be able to discourse, hey, I did this with my class. Um, you know, go to the teacher next door to me and be able to um, talk the same language. We're teaching from the same programs. We're not just pulling from random places. Right. Um, so it's super important at our school to, to, for you to, to be open to that. Um, I'm here to talk about data. And what happened is, on this math journey, because I'm super into math, <laughs> um, I never thought I'd be this way because I struggled in math. But I want kids to think math is fun. And I want them to think that they're good at it because you can be good at it. It's how you look at it. It's the perspective and it's the communication that you're doing. And um, uh, I've been successful in that. I've gotten a really meaningful letters from some of our graduates about how they were ready for sophomore math in high school as a freshman. And they credited it to my enthusiasm in math and how that carried over into their thinking about math. And so that's infectious to me. I want to be the best teacher that I can be. Um, and I need tools to do that. I happen to, by chance, um, come across a really fabulous tool a few years ago that was um, in, in an app form, and it gave us a lot of data. And my partner and I, Trinity Pelkoffer, started writing um, rotary grants uh, to have this app at our school. And we started using it, started collaborating using it, and it's called Freckle. And you probably know about Freckle now because I brought it to the math committee. Um, and um, what that does is it gives us a lot of data. When we would get kids coming into our grade, we could give them a pretest. And what we would find is that they were had Swiss cheese holes all over the place of what they knew and what they didn't know. And what I'm hoping is that if we have a curriculum at our school, that we can then decrease the amount of Swiss cheese holes that we're trying to backfill while we're trying to fill um, the grades that we're supposed to be teaching, but then um, have that, those Swiss cheese um, holes um, lessened, but then also have another piece. We have the freckle piece. I can catch my kids up. I have excellent data. I can show any kind of data you want. I can prove to my parents that your kids are learning. Um, it's, it's a fabulous tool. But then I can also um, have the curriculum piece, and that's just super important. Mary was my uh, mentee teacher um, for two years, and she's a new teacher. And you know, um, she uh, needed a lot of support in math, and I was able to give that to her through the program that I was using at the time. But it would be so nice if we could talk about that K-5 at our school. So 
Um, I'm going to give the time over to Mary, who's actually piloted the program, and she'll talk about that. Thanks. So I'm Mary Akers Bell. Um, I'm not one of the seven who got hired on last year. I was hired the year before. <laughs> um, but I've had an opportunity to pilot the lessons for Bridges through the uh, temporary online subscription that we have. Um, and some of the things I saw immediately that were beneficial for the students is that it was accessible. And that's hard when you're teaching second and third grade. Um, I think it's really important for us as a multi-age classroom to have programs that have a low entry point so that everybody can be invited in, but then a high ceiling for my third graders who want to and are doing fifth and sixth grade math. Um, I also found it very engaging for all students, which is rare for all of the program pieces we've been teaching. You'll get a few here and there, but there's some who weren't engaging, but with the lessons I've done with Bridges, all of the students were actively wanting to be involved. Um, it has really nice meaty tasks with manipulatives and things that the children can be manipulating for multiple days, so they have the confidence, oh, I did that, I'm going to go deeper into this. Um, and it also has skills practice that's hidden in games so that it's engaging for a lot of them and direct instruction. Um, and I think it really helps align the scope and sequence across the year, it is my hope, with having a curriculum that I'm not pulling from different parts. Right. Um, and so I would like you to consider, which is. Okay. Um, all right, back to me. Um, so the next, the next step is that I think you're going to see in the next meeting that we're going to ask for this to be approved so that we can uh, purchase the curriculum, uh, get some professional development like on the calendar for our teachers, get some release days for them to share some of their successful experiences with implementation. Um, and so that's what we hope to happen next in the future. Um, so that concludes our presentation. But I do want to invite you to our Jubilee while I've got you here, right? So this is our annual fundraiser. It's going to be um, a great success, I can already predict. We're at the Kavanaugh Center this year. It's April 18th, um, and you can get tickets now uh, at Mary Collins, and we would love to see some of you there to support uh, our fundraising efforts. And what exactly is this the Jubilee? Oh, so it is a, uh, it's a dinner, uh, silent live auction with music and uh, all kinds of other fun activities. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year um, we did um, vintage circus mm -hmm. and so um, it was very circus themed and so we had performers and magicians and jugglers and it, it's quite the show. We are a visual and performing arts school, <laughs> right. so don't think that doesn't make its way into our fundraisers. So uh, I'm sure if you come, you'll have a great time and we'd love to see some of you there. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate yeah. that. Oh, no, go ahead. How many other teachers for our pilot Yeah. So I believe all of the two tried at least one lesson. Um, there's another teacher friend of mine. I forgot to say this earlier. Um, in the two three, we have two new teachers as of last year, and then me, who's doing my second year in two three. Um, and one of the things that Corinne Kavanaugh, who's one of the new teachers, really likes about Bridges is it helps teach the teachers mm -hmm. how to teach math, which has been really good. And I've, that's what I think too, is it's really well explained lesson plans. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah. We also have the K-1s have really been kind of diving yeah. deep into it. Actually, one of the um, K-1 teachers was kind of the, uh, the catalyst for this whole exploration. Her name was Annie Cozen. She really wanted to be here tonight, but she couldn't make it, right? She was the one who said, you know, we should really think about Bridges. When I was at Napa teaching math, well, I used that program and I really liked it. And so that was kind of the first time that that was introduced. And then we had like a second person recommend it to us. And then, of course, we went, uh, we took three of our teachers to the CPM math conference. I'm not CPM. CMA? Is that the, um, the CMC, CMC North. CMC North. Yeah. So um, just to give, just to give Rajiv some more props, he has come to our school and done an after-school math enrichment program that he charges a small fee for. Uh, students, of course, 
who can't afford it and want to participate can access scholarships through the PTA. He donated that money back to the school for us to go to the math conference. Nice. And so I just want to say thanks for that. And we went and again we were presented with some amazing, you know, Bridges curriculum. And so it just seemed like it was that all the signs were pointing us in that direction. <laughs> And now that we've actually experienced it, we, we, we see why, why it's so highly and, recommended. Um, another thing is, is that Jason Setter from the math committee also said that at his school when he was principal, they had bridges, and he really loved it and had a lot of success with the teachers that are using it. So mm -hmm. It's just really nice to hear enthusiasm from teachers. Absolutely. I just wanted to add, when we did our district math uh, curriculum adoption, what, five years ago now? Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, Mer Mary Collins didn't adopt, you know, completely the same program as the rest of the district right. did. So that's why they had, it. they've kind of chosen their own materials and decided to go that route. So this was, you know, this was a great opportunity for them to do their own process and, and especially with, with newer staff, be able to select something that they could all do in coherence. So, you know, and the lab be able to support them. One of the reasons why we didn't take um, everyday math also is because um, they had trainers come to our site at least two times in the 17 years I've been there, and they could not explain to us how to use it in a multi-age. It just is really difficult because of the spiraling. Mm -hmm. So the way that it starts, you would just literally have to stay with the one grade the whole way. And so we just need something a little bit more open, a little more what Richie was describing. So um, it just it, it's a really hard program to use. I tried to use it, it's just really hard. So. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, will, I can be your, your test yeah. to see if you can teach me math. <laughs> okay, moving on. It's hard to comment from the I public. Like this is like me. So we have a, we have a couple of uh, speakers today, and I just very quickly want to read a little blurb at the beginning so that everybody's clear. Under Government Code Section, blah, blah, blah. Members of the public have the right to address the governing board on any items of interest providing it relates to the subject matter jurisdiction of the school district. And we welcome those comments. In accordance with board policy, each speaker is allocated a total of four minutes to address the board for a maximum of 20 minutes on each subject matter. And we have three different ones, so that's not an issue. While the above reference government code allows speakers to criticize the district's policies, procedures, program services, and or employees, the district does have a current policy specific to complaints against employees. Should comments from the public pertain to a specific district employee, the board requests that the complaint first be submitted in writing to the employee's immediate supervisor for investigation. The board does not take action or discuss items not appearing on the agenda. The board values public comments and wishes to convey that although the board members cannot discuss items that are not in the agenda, they listen carefully, take notes, and value input from the public. So, let's hear about Lumicon from Mike Watt. Uh, I was going to miss it. <laughs> All right, thanks. Good evening. My name is Mike Watt. I'm a teacher at Cherry Valley. Also, I want to throw props out to, thanks, uh, <laughs> props to Andre. He worked with us at Crossroads for seven years. Awesome. Fantastic work. You know, really made a difference with the students. So, I'm here to give you a report on Lumicon. Uh, if a lot of you don't know what Lumicon is, it is Petaluma's premier uh, <laughs> comic book festival. This year we had probably more than 3,500 people wow. attend this one-day event that's put on by the uh, Petaluma High School Library, Casa Grande Library, and the Regional Library. And just, I want to share a couple of the highlights. We had uh, probably 24 professional artists and 40 student artists, awesome. fifth grade and up, get the table right next to the professionals, sell their art. Uh, one of the highlights, yeah, there's several Cherry Valley highlights out there, but uh, our uh, middle school band opened the show at the gates when the people walked in, they, the middle school band was playing and they played the uh, several tunes, We Will Rock You, a couple of Queen tunes, and they played the theme from Star Wars and Star Wars characters, uh, came out to join the, the fray, and the day just went on and on, and it, it was just fantastic. Uh, three Cherry Valley students took the top three prizes for the short story writing contest. Uh, we'll take first place and uh, tied for second for two of them. Well, a couple of the highlights, we, we've gotten better at, uh, or more, uh, broad in our interpretation of what we're doing for the community. So we had uh, one pair of students from uh, McNear School, from Ms. Turco's class, 
they took uh, three uh, three set of stories from like 15 other students or fellow students, and they illustrated, made it into a graphic novel. They printed 75 copies of their graphic novel, sold all 75 wow. for five bucks a piece, and then donated half their proceeds to Patty at Copperfields for the Bookstormers program. Cool. So it was really amazing that you know kids are getting out there. Also, another group from Cherry Valley girls were had a bake sale for. Um, for the Animals of Australia, uh, Hope from the Ashes, they raised uh, more than $550 for this uh, situation. So we were very impressed by that. And uh, I just want to really encourage you to be part of this. It's uh, an amazing opportunity for these kids. They're kind of fringy kids that don't get a lot of support. We had like more than 40 kids in costume that came dressed up. We had a costume parade with the little kids and the bigger kids competed for prizes. And it's just a really uh, amazing opportunity for these guys to show off their stuff. And I personally want to thank Matthew for being there, and Cliff. And I think Maddie was there, but the name tags got switched on us tonight, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. But again, uh, our design is always made by students. It's really a student-driven situation, so if you get a chance next year, it'll be our seventh year. Thank you. Cool. Thank Can, you. I say, yeah. Yeah. Can I just say that it was really inspiring. I've, been, I've heard about it for so long. And finally got there, and it was just the. And I went mainly to the kids because you know I'm a school board member, and and I just they were so into what they were doing. They were so talented, you know. They had great stories, but they were they owned so much of what they were doing, yeah. and you could. It was so inspiring. I so thank you for for doing this. Many of the kids, you know, kids. Think our one girl uh, sold out her stuff, made two hundred dollars in the day. And uh, I would say to those kids, like, uh, you made $200 today. If you talk to these professionals sitting next to you, they were probably in their mid-20s before they made $200. And that was over, yeah. like, a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a great opportunity yeah. for these kids to bring this out. We've had one girl that was with us for the last, she wasn't here yet, but this year, but she was with us since she was 15, came back for five years, and now uh, she's a syndicated com uh, comic book artist mm -hmm. in the newspapers, and they have in the Central Valley and stuff like that. So cool. it's a great stepping stone for these kids to show their art and show their skills. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Turco and Nancy Ryan. The, that's good. The more the merrier. So we have the vital and important role of student advisor, mentor me advocate on your campus. Hi everybody, I'm Nancy Ryan. I'm the, um, Student advisor at McNear. I've been with Mentor Me for over 13 years, and a district employee for many years, a parent in the district. So I just wanted to mention how much of a, an impact being a student advisor has on, on a, on the climate of the community, the school, and um, how it can positively impact so many people, not just the students. You know, I'm here to, um, um, as a flexible person for for teachers to um, have somebody when a little crisis or a little intervention is needed, I can always pop in and let the teachers teach, you know, take the child out or, um, and let the teacher focus on the majority of the class. Are you, are you there full time or? I'm there um, uh, till one o'clock every day. Okay, yeah, thank so, you. Uh, so I do a drop off. I do um, drop off in the morning. Mm -hmm. I also think that just being at the crosswalk in the morning yeah. is mm -hmm. so important, even though it's a little early mm -hmm. and a little cold <laughs> lately. <laughs> but you know, I noticed a couple of things. Uh, it's probably my favorite part of my job is greeting everybody coming through, and I noticed that um, it helps the kids and sometimes the parents with social interaction. Yeah. So, you know, to look, so my kids don't know how to look in the eye and say, oh, good morning, and right. things like that. So, that, I believe that's an important part of their job and sets a tone for the rest of the day. So, um, so another thing I have done is I've implemented a, a homework club after school on campus. And um, it's twice a week. I have about an average of 25 kids that show up at homework club. I have a teacher with me all the time. But I, out of that, um, we have a lot of like, English learners. Um, some of the parents, especially the moms, were coming up to us and say, you teach my kid English, you teach my English, you teach me English. And we're like, hmm, OK. So, uh, <laughs> so we started putting a little moms group together of English learner mothers. And, and we did that all last year. 
and we, they brought their kids with them. So we found out that the, the parents' um, grade level was probably just about what the kids' grade level was. So we had some, um, um, the librarian pick out some books so the kids could read to the parents in English, and the parents could read to the kids in English. So we loved that. So that was highly successful. So we also did, um, I started, and these are unique to every school. This is just what I found out our campus needed, um, that um, we had a lot of siblings that needed support that their, their sibling had uh, special needs. Mm -hmm. So we kind of forget those kids of what they go through, you know, at home or even at school when you're, you know, your brother or your sister has special needs and who knows what's going to happen on campus. Um, has a big impact on their siblings. So yeah. we started a little support group for them. Um, we started with just at McNear, and then it just sort of grew, and so we invite everybody from Petaluma, any sibling of a, of a child with special needs, can come to our, our uh, support group at the Kavanaugh. So we did that. So um, I love my job, and it's a big, far-reaching job. Yeah and never ending, and um, I love it, and I would just like to you guys to consider making it a priority to get a special um, person, which is a student advisor on the campuses, not only, um, well, to, most, to all the schools, but especially those schools that really can't afford it in their PTA budget, because that's how I got to be the, the student advisor at McNair. Any questions? Oh, so you were paid for through the, the PTA, PTA funds, through McNear. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And here is my friend, Amy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then second everything she said, Nancy really understated a lot of what she does and what she provides. And we had some incredible <laughs> presentations tonight about intervention programs. But what we're doing is prevention right. mm -hmm. at the very yeah. basic level. And I think that it's an incredibly worthwhile um, position to fund for the district. If you probably worked out the numbers, although I can't do all that stuff, you probably find that you're getting a lot more bang for your buck in mental health services from what we're providing than a counselor 20 minutes a week when the kid's getting yanked out of class, right? So Nancy, it does take a super special person, and Nancy is the most trusted adult on our campus. She's working with students who <laughs> have really burned their bridges with their teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Students who have really, there's no, there's, they're, they're beyond the line already. And um, Nancy is the one that they trust. Nancy is the one that they go to, and Nancy the one, is the one who finds them what they need. And those are all things that <clears throat> we would love to do, but we have to get over our anger at them first. <laughs> no, it's not like that, of course not, but, um, she can do it in a way that we can't. We have to have a certain relationship with them, and she needs to have a certain relationship with them. Before there was Nancy, we had a couple other folks, and one person who was with us for a really short time was Janice Phillips, who I want to introduce you. She um, contacted me, I ran into her, and I was talking about how excited I was that the school district was starting to put money into more prevention, early, early education, and prevention. And she always loved her job, and we loved her, but it wasn't a living wage for her. So I just want to make sure you guys know this face and know this person. <laughs> she said, this has been, what, six, seven years ago? I can't give it up. Yeah. So tell her your advice. I'm going to, I'm, my name's Janice Phillips, and I'm going to speak to you from just a few different paths. Um, I grew up in this district. I'm a graduate of this district. I'm a former employee of this district. Um, I, I think I was employed for eight, eight years. Um, and I'm a parent of this district. So my son is now in seventh grade at Elena Junior High School. And he was toddling when I was at McNair. And what I would like to speak to most is the tangible community connection that the student advisor brings to the environment. So. You have somebody, when Nancy's in the morning, when I was there, it was a little different. It came a little later in the day. I would have my time in the classrooms, be out on my recess, and then I'd be there at the end of the day. So if something came up, if there was a particular 
situation with friends at recess, somebody who was having a hard time at lunch, who I had to speak with outside of class, that was an opportunity for me to stop that mom at the crosswalk and go, hey, this little thing came up today, you may just want to check in, but just so you know, this is what's going on. A piece of information that otherwise, in the grand scheme of everybody's day, would have been lost. And is really small, but, but huge for that one student who's trying to so fiercely find their way in this broader system. So I just, I really, really would like you guys to consider this. It's something that I am incredibly passionate about, and it's something that I speak about all the time. It's on my social media. It's with every single dinner party I go to. It's all the other parents that I speak with, and they're like, I don't know what's going on, and I'm like, let's, this would be the perfect person for you to talk to on your campus if they were there. So I just, please consider what is being said today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Costas. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. I'm Peter Costas, um, Sonoma County Office of Education Trustee. And just a couple of, of just quick things here. Um, sure, you know about it, of course. Um, today at school, there was a workshop on the coronavirus and um, with, with public health. And um, hopefully, um, that's just information um, that schools will be able to get as talking points if parents are concerned or staff are concerned. And uh, I understand they're going to try to um, put a PowerPoint together and put it in Spanish too. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really good that they get that out there if there's any fears or anything like that. Um, the second thing, um, last week Dr. Harrington uh, posted a letter on the Supreme Court's decision on uh, public charge and uh, expanding the rule of public charge. So, you have legal immigrants, if they're um, on any kind of public assistance for, what, a year, they could deny, be denied their, uh, their legal path to, uh, to citizenship. So the message is um, schools are safe places, um, and we encourage um, our parents that have not to be afraid and um, not deny their kids free and, public, uh, free and reduced lunch, because that's one of the programs that um, Parents might think that, oh, if I get my kids on free reduced lunch, I'm going to get supported and I'm not. So we want to make, we want to make sure our parents realize school's a, a very safe place. Um, third thing, on, on, on February 25th at SCO, um, uh, a free uh, workshop by Carl Colvin of uh, School and Legal Services on pending legislation. So that's geared for superintendents and trustees. I forget what time it is, but it's... It'll be morning or afternoon. If it's morning, breakfast. If it's afternoon, lunch. <laughs> if it's dinner, it's dinner. But um, that'd be on February 25th, and you can look at that at the, the scope website. Yes, the mm -hmm. scope. And just the last thing is a great presentation from Men or Me. Um, you know, I'm also on the board of Men or Me, and you've probably heard that um, Men or Me is now uh, merged with uh, Pedal of People Services. Oh, that's official. Um, just happened. For, that's official. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's it's been that. official for um, a couple of weeks. Now. Yeah. And um, we're as a board, we're very happy about that. Um, it's going to give us the uh, financial stability yeah. as a nonprofit, because yeah. nonprofits it's hard to be a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So um, the work of our vision, uh, continuing providing um, mentors, uh, connecting mentors with mentees in, in schools in the Petaluma area, will continue to happen. So what's happening up here with, with, with uh, Pendle and People Services and Mentor Board, that's just up here um, at the school site level, uh, providing the services that they were just talking about, seamless uh, counseling service, all seamless. So we're, we're very pleased about that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. activities and correspondence with school board members. We did board office hours today at Pengrove, um, adult education graduation, the, res um, the Resilience Movie Poly Class Foundation presentation, website review, Nomicon, and marijuana and vaping presentation at Petaluma High School. And now, approval of a consent agenda by consolidated motion. I'm 
I move to approve the consent agenda by consolidated motion. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, Are there, is there anything here that rises to the level of Children have fun and all their field trips? Yeah, I know. The field trips are amazing. Yeah, you want to go to York? Yeah. 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 Well, I think Auntie is going to the York one. Yes, she is. Okay, so shall we vote, Ben? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Action items. Resolution 1920-14 of the Board of Education of the Pueblo City Elementary and Joint Union High School Districts identifying needed credentials and certificates to be skipped in a certificated layoff process in the 2019-20 school year, and I just want to say, oh, can we move that? I was going to say. I second. Okay. okay. Um, this is uh, something that happens every year. It's something we need to do. Um, we have de certain deadlines if we're going to lay anybody off. Hopefully that won't happen. But so this is kind of boilerplate. Mm -hmm. We do it every okay, year. I remember this from last year. Yeah. So, yeah. so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And 10.1.2, Resolution 1920-15 of the Board of Education of the Peleliu City Elementary and Joint Union High School Districts, establishing the criteria determining the order of layoff among certificated employees with the same seniority date in the 2019-20 school year. Move to approve. Second. <coughs> Comments? This is kind of another boilerplate. Yes. Once it's a year. Same. It's just it's the same. Right. Oh, I did want to ask, uh, yeah. is PFT, is it part of the um, contract? Do you have no. to agree to it? The it's not a negotiated. It's not a negotiated item? No. Okay. No. no. It's basically what the district says is we really need to make sure we save all our bilingual teachers. Right. So okay. even if that's kind of what it is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Business services. Resolution 1920-6. Oh no, I left something out. <laughs> approval, sorry. <laughs> approval of the amended certificated salary schedules. So, I, yeah, go I move. I second. Questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Business services. Resolution 1920-16 of the Board of Education of the Petaluma City Elementary and Petaluma Joint Union High School Districts of the County of Sonoma, authorizing the execution, oh God, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep going with this, it's because of the <laughs> don't pause it. Yeah. Yeah. Authorizing the execution of the amended joint powers agreement and bylaws and adopt separate, bleh, separate documents for each program of the Redwood Empire Schools Insurance Group, uh, I this too. known as RESIC. So moved. Second. Comments, questions? Our insurance keeps going up, but it's not our fault. No, and it's not Vesic's fault either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Finally, discussion information, revised administrative regulation, tobacco, and nicotine use. So, first reading. Yeah, first reading. I mean, not first reading. Oh, it's the second this is an AR. This is, this is the AR, and I'm noticing it in. Essentially what it is, is I add in, in the AR below, although in this DP, there should be a line that's redacted in there about the suspensions. It says students who violate this prohibition shall be subject to disciplinary procedures which may result in suspension from school. So that's going to be across the road. Although but it's together. may result. That's a may. Okay. And, and then in the AR that's attached in the agenda, you'll see that essentially what I did was I went in and I called it now tobacco and nicotine use, so that right. it's very clear it's not just cigarettes, it's tobacco and nicotine. Yeah. And then I wrote, you know, it just, can be ingested in any forms, that includes e-cigarettes, vapes, you know, drills, and, and kind of went down the list so that it's not just assumed that what we're doing is for cigarettes only. And then um, also in going into CSBA, I kind of looked at the language that they had and to see if they had anything else for tobacco, and they did have, um, it's a policy around for pregnant youth as well and, and support oh, them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So I added all that in as That's well. That's great. Yeah. So those, are, those are both highlighted in there. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Or? Okay. Future business. Can we get a discussion and action item on getting menstrual products in schools for the next school year? Yeah. We're working on it. Cool. Oh, you are? We're collecting data. <clears throat> We're collecting data. So. I like data. Cool. Well, 
then whenever the data is ready, I would like to see it, which I'm sure you were going to do anyway. <laughs> yes, she was. Thank you. Any other future business? Well, we want to discuss the date for the, the right. discussion and we, of the I governance I have annotated text. And we also need to talk about future office hours. Because yeah, we, we don't have that? anything planned after today, after today. Oh. Am I right? Yeah. Right. So, so we, we have a bunch of schools we still have to go. Yeah. Through. I don't know if we need to do that. Uh, I mean, I don't care. But I don't want to waste people's time with us looking at our calendars. It's more. Yeah. Well, let's just at least look at let's do the discussion because I'm I w would like to do it before March fifth, um, if possible. Oh, for the book. Yeah, for the book. Yeah, let's decide on a date for the let's discussion. Let's do the yeah for the discussion because that's publicly noticed. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Let's just do it at the next meeting. We can discuss it at the next meeting. Oh, well, we are we having a whole discussion? We're going to have a whole discussion. Oh. Okay. How long is it? Well, 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 it would have to be for me if it's during the week. It has to be in the evening. Yeah, me too. Well, I think for everybody it does. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't care if you want to have it part of the have meeting. Really have you it don't want until 10 o'clock at night. No, you don't. I'm not going to play. Okay, so <laughs> should we just throw out a date? Sure. Well, you guys are much. Like oh, Sheldon had said. Well, because I'm thinking Sheldon maybe we should do it. that he couldn't do it on a Saturday. Was well, if we wanted to do it during the week, I, I was know. thinking we already give up our Tuesdays. Yeah, so Tuesday. maybe Tuesday the 3rd. Of March? Yeah. Well, that's before the 5th. Yeah. Of March. Yeah. Oh, so just do it in the evening that day? Yeah. Um, I don't know how. Is it there? That's know, super Tuesday. There, there's or like a... The, the, <laughs> it better be. I have a special you know. ed meeting. Is that on the third? <laughs> what do you guys see? You? What's on the third? Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> there's like an all day meeting. Oh, there's a meeting tomorrow. I know there's a meeting tomorrow. And then you had said two other ones, one of which is our birthday. Oh, yeah, birthday plans. Oh, yeah. Wait, you, <laughs> you, yes. you said. Um, so is it the third? Which one was it? The, you told me the dates. Yeah, March third. Okay. March third. So that's not going to work because I want to. Yeah. I won't be able to go to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about, and what's the next meeting? The twenty fifth. Yeah. What about the third? You could. What do you got? Like five thirty start. Yeah. Um, the we can do it on the third and five thirty start. And yeah. Just be really tired. I might be all. Crazy. Yeah, I can't go. Because I'm going to be in a meeting all day. Oh. That's yeah. right. Well, you guys are working. We work all day. Hey, we I'm old all and I've already worked all day many, many times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, April 10th. Okay, so March 3rd? March 3rd. What time? 5.30? Is that what? I think so. Can you guys get the, you can't do the third? Angela Davis is there on March 3rd. <gasps> Angela Davis is going to be at Snow State? I feel like being paid on yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing the third anymore. We're not doing the third. No. I want to go to that. Mm -hmm. Me too. I've heard her speak a couple times. She's dynamic. Or if we lost her because she wouldn't take the oath to swear to not be a communist. Mm -hmm. We all have to take that stupid oath. Yeah. Well, there's some guy in Montana who said it's okay to shoot socialists. So. <laughs> <laughs> <And he's laughs> <fine. laughs> okay. No politics. All right. So, are we doing? Are we doing the third? No. 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 What about the? Games? March 24th. Yeah, why does that have to be March 24th? Yeah, well, I just hope we do. I'm gone. It's on the 26th. Oh, okay. Well, you have to be here for this one. Yeah. 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 It's your assignment. <laughs> I just want to sit back and hear you guys discuss it. Well, yeah, the later Wednesdays work for me if they work for you. Wednesday? Yeah. 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 Wednesday? Yeah.
I wasn't going to, but I'm bullied. <laughs> I just can't. She's a bully. Yeah, it's a discussion oh. item. You can always, you can always, um, because Sheldon will be there, then you can do your dates for your. Oh, why don't we do it that? That's screen. perfect. Mm -hmm. So we'll do, we'll do book discussion and office hour dates. Um, sure. Wednesday the 26th? Sure. Cool. Uh, yeah. What time on Wednesday? 5.30? Yeah. 5.30 or 6, yeah. Well, you, you're coming 30. the longest way, so what would be better for you? I mean, 6 is always better for me. But okay, let's do 6. Is so that so that 6 o'clock? Yeah, 6 o'clock. Here. 6 o'clock, here. So, here. Book. Um, 26. Talk. Thank you. All right. Sweet. Good. 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 This weekend. All righty. Shut her down. Okay. Oh, um, snacks. Are we going to do oh, There's no, okay. There's no closed session. There's nothing to talk about in closed session. So I officially adjourn the meeting. Okay. Okay.